I really debated about whether or not to make this video because I don't want to make things worse for anybody concerned. People with mental health issues and neurological issues, we call them behavioral health disabilities, and that includes such things as recovery from addiction and so on, face a lot of stigma, and we are used as the butt of jokes. We are used as the boogeyman. The religious would say, there but for the grace of God go I. So you can feel all smug and sanctimonious because right now you're not afflicted, suffering from, so you can feel superior to those who are. You know, the hatred of people with behavioral health challenges and the fear, um, it goes back to religious stuff. It goes back to the masses not being educated, even the people who did have education thought we were demon-possessed or evil or that we brought it on ourselves or malingerers or lazy or oh, come on just state the obvious if a person has cancer unless you're some new age fruit fly or oprah winfrey or deep pockets chopra or one of those cranks uh you're not going to blame a person for cancer for having cancer Studies have proved that an attitude has nothing to do with A, whether one gets cancer, B, uh, how well one recovers from cancer. You know, if you've got cancer, you're miserable, especially if you're going through traditional medical stuff like chemo and radiation therapy and yuck, you know, instead of just saying, okay, I quit, let's, let's die. You're going to suffer a lot, some modern people. With a little bit of education, understand that cancer is a medical condition, that it's treatable in many cases, that it's not the uh, patient's fault for having cancer. Nobody would ever say, well, you have cancer because you're too lazy, or you don't really have cancer, you just want to collect benefits, or you wanted to have cancer so that you could uh, get out of your personal responsibilities as a citizen of the planet. People don't usually say that stuff. Unless they're really, really heavy duty born again or something. Atheists, skeptics, free thinkers. It's open season on people with behavioral health challenges. Drunk, junkie, brain damage, idiot, retard. It's open season. Real medical conditions. Jen McCrite, McCree, I don't remember, started that Atheism Plus thing. She's got real medical conditions, people. This is not malingering and self-pity. Oh, she's got clinical depression. At least that's the way I understood it. it. She didn't just pull that out of a hat. That's a real medical condition. And it gets exacerbated. When it's triggered by high stress stuff. Oh, you remember the movie James, James Well put together Frankenstein, the old black and white version with Boris Karloff? That was a movie about gay people, folks. That was a movie about what it's like to be the victim of mob violence. You know, it wasn't the monster's fault that he was like that. He didn't create himself. He was the way he was. And everybody else around him just freaked the fuck out because he was different than they were. Pitchforks and torches. Because they're different than you. That's not skeptical. That's not rational. That's not critical thinking. That's just plain old ordinary fundamentalist knee-jerk mob violence. I'm not better than anybody else because I don't have a diagnosis of fibromyalgia. I don't know what fibromyalgia is. I don't know what it's like to live with it. Now, I could listen to somebody tell me about it and learn some stuff and maybe contribute something useful to improve the quality of their lives. Or I could rag on them, tell them what a no-good bum they are, how childish they are, what a loser they are. How weak would I have to be as a personality and an ego to have to go there to another person who's not feeling good? Let me tell you what it's like to have depression. Because I worked myself out of it. No drugs. No woo. Just work. I mean, I worked my way out of chronic depression. I still have 
um, episodes. I still have situational depression. And, you know, I'm in a high-stress life, and I'm low-income. So these happen periodically. It's not like every six to ten years. I mean, every now and then, I feel it start to resurface. And I have to take steps, or it'll get out of control, and I'll end up suicidal. And you're just spent, and you really can't think straight. You don't want to have to make any decisions. And it hurts so bad to just get up out of bed and go pee. You ever had the flu? Now imagine that's been going on for months. Imagine every day with no relief in sight. You have to drag your butt out of bed, take your shower, put on your clothes, grab your keys, go out and go to work. Actually accomplish something so you don't get fired and come home. Just think of what that's like to have to do that for months. Now, a lot of people use medication to get through depression. And I got no qualms with that. If, they, if that's what they want to do, I, I am extremely skeptical of the profession of psychology and psychiatry these days. Because it's been so badly corrupted by Big Pharma and their interest in peddling drugs. Some people get a world of good out of medication. It didn't work for me. It caused a lot of side effects and residual stuff that I didn't want to have in my life. For instance, the serotonin uptake inhibitor they put me on reduces libido. As a female-bodied person, I needed to have my sexuality and as an incest survivor. I needed to have my sexuality. So a decrease in libido was the last thing I needed to help control depression. The only benefit I got from it was I had a, I remembered vivid dreams. When I couldn't get to the pharmacy in time and my prescription ran out, the withdrawal symptoms were hideous and it wasn't worth it. So I don't want to be physically dependent on a chemical that if I don't have access to it because I don't have the privilege to just run to the pharmacy in a car. When I refilled my prescription after that time I went through withdrawal, I immediately started shutting it down. I went for a week at full dose and then I started having the dose until I trickled down to nothing and I withdrew from the drug because I could see that wasn't going to fly. To replace that, I had to take some serious control of my life. That's one reason why I'm an out atheist. I didn't call myself an atheist. I was a, I guess you call it a weak atheist. I don't know. I was pretty passive about it and I had a lot of residual woo stuff going on in my head. I had to tighten up my thinking process. I had to get rational. I could not let out of control emotions control me. So I had to get really rigorous. And one of the things I had to do was eliminate from my life the things that were making me sick. No television. Look, even on PBS, if I'm watching a documentary or something, during the uh, breaks or at the top of the hour when they're going from one program to the next, Stuff comes on that I don't choose to have in my head. Uh, promotions for other uh, shows and news and stuff. There are graphic images that I don't need to have in my head. It's fine for me to deal with every issue on the planet, pretty much. As long as I can do it in a way that doesn't trigger me. Because I also have post-traumatic stress. I don't need to be triggered and re-traumatized. One of the biggest benefits of living rural is that I hardly ever see an advertisement. You people get thousands of them every day between the television and the billboards and the magazines and the bus stops and the blah, 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 blah. You guys have to look at them all the time and they're telling you shit about yourself that isn't true. They're telling you you should be something you can't possibly be. So you gotta buy a product you don't really need and then the product doesn't make you feel better. So go out and buy another product and it starts that whole addiction cycle and if you can't live up to it, you know, like me, I'm poor. I can't keep pouring money down a rat hole to make the corporation rich because the corporation decided to make me feel bad about myself. I can't participate in that. And it's freed me to be able to use my mind for, well, a lot more useful things. Like, did you know that some amateur astronomers just discovered an explosion on Jupiter? I'd rather have that shit in my head than airbrushed pictures of models that don't even look like the pictures of them in the magazines. They don't even look like that. I've had to stay away from toxic people. You know, I've got this guy living next door. And he's got mental health issues and he won't take personal responsibility for it. He makes it everybody else's fault. I hate humanity. Humans are stupid. They're morons. Everybody he meets, whoever tells him, no, you don't get to act like that, 
that he's right and they're fatty. Um, he's right and they're stupid. Never even gets a hint that maybe all these people are mad at him, not because they're stupid, but maybe because he's screwing up. Well, how do I deal with him? Because he's right next door, making noise all the time. Dogs barking, trying to break into my yard. Him trying to break into my yard, threatening to kill me, blah, blah, blah. When he's out there throwing one of his tantrums or when he deliberately puts his, locks his dogs up right next to me so that they'll bark, what do I do? I pretend I don't hear a thing. I don't look at him. I don't speak to him. I don't hardly even speak about him. I make him not part of my universe. So I keep my mind busy with other stuff. Oh, sure, now and again, his little antics interrupt my life. But I know if I just wait it out for a few minutes, uh, he'll get bored and go on about whatever squirrely business he's about. Because he's not getting a rise out of me and it gets boring real fast. So he goes on to something else that's more amusing. Well, that's how I deal with the trolls online. Jen McCrate made a mistake. Well, her daddy tried to do a nice thing and leave a blog post and... He pulled the daddy thing and I'll punch you in the nose if you're not nice to my daughter kind of deal. And, you know, daddies do shit like that. You know, give the guy some slack. His daughter's been through a lot of shit. And everybody started ragging on daddy. Well, she came on in her blog and she said, you know, I said I wasn't going to write another blog, but y'all went after my daddy. And here's some examples of how people went after my daddy. You know, I left a really nice comment to your daddy. And so did some other people. You don't even notice it. You just see the bad stuff. Well, you know, that's depression, dude. When I get up in the morning and I go outside, the first thing I see is a damn dumpster. And an interstate. With ugly ass trucks and weeds. And I could look at that all day long and just completely psych myself out. So what did I do? I put up parachutes and... Uh, canopies outside, and I have potted plants, and I have my fish pool, and in the house here I've got all kinds of decorations and pretties and beautiful stuff to look at. There's little statues and dolls and uh, artwork all over the place and smiles and bright colors and it's beautiful here because I don't need to be psyched out. The best treatment for depression is to act as if you don't have it. I get suicidal. And when I tell you I'm suicidal, I'm not jerking around. I'm not looking for pity. When I tell you I'm suicidal, I'm telling you that my brain chemistry has triggered and I'm having to fight a very seductive feeling that says it doesn't matter anymore. You could be out of pain just off yourself. I'm really struggling and it's very seductive and it's the only thing in the room. When I tell you that I'm suicidal, I'm not tricking your chain. I really need moral support. Now, I do most of the heavy lifting my own self, but it's just nice to know that other people out there give a shit. Jen was on the right track trying to do atheism plus and have it be positive space. That's why I was drawn to it because it's positive. People who troll are not critical thinkers. People who troll are not skeptical. They're not intellectuals. People who use hate speech and slurs aren't even trying. They've swallowed the Kool-Aid. It's cool now to be mean to people, to blame people for being uh, poor or in pain or weak or vulnerable. Yeah, we were in one of the worst economic situations this country there. I've never seen it like this. I'm 57 years old now. It's not poor people's fault the economy went to crap. Look at the people who gave you the crappy mortgages. Look at the people who've been swiping money right from under your nose. Know, that bank bailout, has that improved anything? That bailout, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson screams that that bailout could have funded NASA and its present budget for 50 freaking years. Don't blame me. Don't blame poor folks. Don't blame people with disabilities. That's not rational. That's not skeptical. When people tell you that there's a boogeyman, that's the same thing as telling you there's a devil. Why aren't you questioning that? Why aren't you speaking up? Atheism plus wouldn't be necessary if people would just speak up and say, no, you don't get to use that kind of language talking about somebody that way. No, you don't get to project onto people motives and 
diagnoses. Who the hell do you think you are diagnosing people with borderline personality disorder and other bullshit? If you're a skeptic, why aren't you questioning this? Did you know that disorders aren't something that can be medically verified? There's no scientific test. That can a reproducible scientific test that can prove somebody has X, Y, and Z disorder. They're completely arbitrary and at the whim of the diagnostician, which is usually a psychologist, not a psychiatrist. And they're used for the purposes of, of dispensing drugs. Why are you questioning this? You know, Natalie Reed talked about that. She talked about how we need to apply skepticism to social science. I had a lot of woo has infiltrated psychology and psychiatry, even the neurosciences. Why aren't we questioning that? Why aren't we skeptical? Just because somebody has alphabet soup behind his name doesn't mean he's an expert. Why is it so easy to just hate somebody for having a real disability that makes them a little bit different than you? Not way different, a little bit different. But the stereotypes and the slurs, and that tells me these are not very bright people. They haven't even done their homework. They don't know the first thing about behavioral health disabilities, but they think it's their right to prejudge. That's not skeptical. That's not rational. It's not critical thinking. Just automatically jump to an assumption based on a prejudice about this is what you've heard people like me are like. Why didn't you ask me? So this rat packing on Jen McCry, it has nothing to do with skepticism or critical thinking or anything like that. It's a game. If somebody's overtly just out and out using hate speech and threats and stuff like that, that person doesn't exist. That's what you do. If the person says something that could be just asking questions, give them the benefit of the doubt for one response. Call them on it and say, look, you're, you're derailing the conversation. This is not the point. Do your own homework. It's not my job to educate you. Come back when you know enough to have a real conversation about the topic at hand. And it's not just about females, it's about queers and it's about people of color and people with disabilities and on and on and on. We don't have to tell them those slurs aren't okay. They can figure that out for themselves. They know they're doing the wrong thing. And we don't have to roll over for them. Oh, we're violating their freedom of speech. And you're a coward. You're blocking people. To be out on the internet as a queer and an atheist and a person with brain injuries, that takes some courage. Don't call me a coward, hiding, hiding behind your anonymous name, taking pot shots at a complete stranger who's barely making it. Oh, no. Don't call me a coward because I don't have the time to waste on you. I have very limited resources. I'm moderating comments, not tolerating abuse. There's four brand new mods in the past week or so that... They're brand new names. Do they know how to moderate? People said, we're not brand new mods. These are brand new names because we're protecting our accounts so we won't get doc dropped. So I wrote and said, look, this is supposed to be safe space. Why isn't information on how to uh, protect oneself from doc dropping made available immediately to us on this Reddit? Because I'm new here. I don't know how to do that. Please tell me what I need to do. So call off your old tired ethics. That shit you learned in church, or even if you're not, you never were church. If you're a, what's it called, natural native atheist? You're steeped in a culture that thinks people like me are demon possessed. It's all our fault, right? I, I decided to be born into a family where my head would be used as a basketball against a concrete floor. Uh huh. Yeah, sure. That's rational. God is punishing my mother. By giving her a disabled child. Yeah, I have Virginia. Some, I think he's a senator. I don't know. Saying that kind of shit. That disabled children are a punishment from God. Y'all atheists need to tighten it up. Some of you want to be lazy and just sneer at the Christians. You go right ahead. But I'll tell you what. Those Christians, nobody's giving them an option. Nobody's giving them an alternative. And you're sure not presenting one. You're perpetuating your own persecution and, and you're participating in the destruction of the social fabric by being so hateful and so repulsive that people don't want anything to do with you or what you think and are going to stay church and are going to be concretized around their church.
because you have been so nasty to them. And now you're being nasty to other atheists? Way to freaking go. Way to swallow the Kool-Aid, because you know, the reactionary theocrats, the Republican Party in the United States, those people are eating this shit with a spoon, boy. They love hearing that we're at each other's throats and that you're threatening to kill people. And as long as we're all fighting with each other, we won't fight them. And we look like a bunch of crackpots. Say, so see, this is what, it's, what life is like without a god. You want a totalitarian dictatorship where you have to do exactly what it says in the Bible? Keep it up. We're headed that way.